just want to make you laugh I just want to see you that smile Baby, we're only here For a little while I just want to hold you till you Fall asleep I want love I want us I want you I want me I want peace Oliver Sacks the British neurologist and author said that to live on a day-to-day basis is insufficient for human beings. We need to transcend, transport, escape. We need meaning, understanding, and explanation. We need to see overall patterns in our lives. We need hope, the sense of a future, and we need freedom, or at least the illusion of freedom. To get beyond ourselves, whether with telescopes or microscopes and our ever-burgeoning technology, or in states of mind that allow us to travel to other worlds, to rise above our immediate surroundings. We may seek, too, a relaxing of inhibitions that makes it easier to bond with each other, or transports that make our consciousness of time and mortality easier to bear. We seek a holiday from our inner and outer restrictions, a more intense sense of the here and now, the beauty and value of the world that we live in. My name is Rick Alexander. You guys are listening to Morning Coffee. If you guys are digging the show, it would mean the world to me if you would head to iTunes and give us a five-star review. I started with that prolonged, uh, we'll call it an epilogue or whatever. I love that quote so much. Today, what I want to do is I want to talk about like how do we transcend? How do we transcend the situation that we're in? And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, it's going to tie in a lot of sort of themes that I talk about a lot. So you'll hear common threads. But in many ways, we've built a fragmented society. The West is hell-bent on separatism in every sense, from the rest of the world as much as from ourselves. We're all growing more and more disconnected from each other, despite the fact that we're more connected through technology than we've ever been before. And while that's troubling in itself, it may actually be a symptom of a much larger issue, and that is the way in which we view life in general. See, we're taught from an early age to be able to compartmentalize everything in the pursuit of gain. In other words, if you keep your work and personal life separate, you'll be able to get further ahead professionally. In sports, it's common to try and separate your mind and body so that you're able to keep pushing forward on sore muscles. All my endurance athletes know exactly what I'm talking about. But similarly, we push to separate church and state, to separate love and pleasure, to separate business and family, and so on. And while many cases could be made to make any of these things of massive benefit at any given time, it calls into question our true motivations. Why are we so hellbent on removing connectedness? Until very recently, in terms of history, we literally kept our humans segregated. It's as if loneliness is the collective goal of humanity. That's what it seems like when we live like this. This separatist view of the world appears to carry over into our psyche as well. Often due to coping mechanisms and survival instincts, we tend to look at our past as a series of separate events. Things that offer no value outside of providing something to move past or overcome. We keep our head down and we push forward, and this is particularly true when we're going through adverse situations. When you're going through hell, keep on going. That's the old adage, right? But since we love to separate everything in this world, perhaps another distinction should be made. What if the thing that is the most effective at this time isn't what is the most beneficial in the long run? What if you stopped in hell for just a moment? What if you collected yourself and looked around to figure out what you might learn? Would a little more temporary pain now be worth avoiding that same pain in a future scenario? In other words, what if you leaned into the things that connect us? Consider the myriad of circumstances that life throws at us, which make it feel like life itself is against us. When we find ourselves in the midst of pain from a breakup or loss of a dream for the future that just won't be so anymore, it's easy to want to numb yourself to get through it. We drink, we distract ourselves, we do everything to not feel. But the circulatory nature of life means that everything that was will be again, especially if we don't learn from it from the first time. Now, for a minute, just pause script and think about the opposite situation, when things are good, when everything works out so much better than you could have ever imagined. What do you do in those moments? Do we attribute it to our unparalleled prowess, or do we look around and thank our surroundings? 
Do we let success blind us to the fact that bad times could have just as easily appeared had the coin in that moment landed on tails instead of heads? Do we ask ourselves how we got so damn lucky when things go right? Sometimes. My interest isn't in how to quickly move through the bad and get back to the good because that is essentially leaving the whole entire process to chance. A better question might be, how do we take stock throughout every moment so that we can position ourselves to maximize the future? How do we transcend our current states so that the state we are in next becomes a net sum of everything we've done? Instead of getting through the negative and simply trying to return to better times, how do we use both the negative and the better times to create a life that is better than anything we could have previously imagined? Our life can either be a series of cycles wherein which we weather storms simply hoping to return to homeostasis, which is what we all do when we go through bad times. Like, how do I just get back to where I was? But our relative level of happiness, success, etc., like, is that the goal? Or... Our life can be a series of trials that are essentially preparing us for a better and better future. Do we survive and stay the same or do we level up and transcend? That is the thing that we are asking ourselves when we find ourselves in hard time. Our survival mechanism and our propensity to want to survive makes us look at the first situation. It makes us want to survive and stay the same. But the reality is that if that's the thing, you're just going to end up having to relearn that lesson as many times as it takes, and maybe you never actually transcend. Because transcendence is the only real option in this life. A life of going through difficulty just to remain the same doesn't feel like a win to me at all. Yet in light of this, how many of us operate this way? We hope to get back to when times are good because it's so hard to imagine how times could actually be any better. And when we think about transcendence, that is what we're after. We're after better. And the only way we can transcend is to look around and to figure out what we need to know in order to move on. And if you look at this Oliver Sacks quote, one of the things that he talks about is that we need hope, the sense of a future. We need freedom or at least the illusion of freedom to get beyond ourselves. And then he goes on to talk about whether it's with telescopes or microscopes and our, our ever kind of quest for more technology. Like essentially all of these things that we're doing, all of this moving the needle for the next generation and trying to make life better, it's how we transcend. It's what we're doing here. Whatever you do today is only going to give you a little bit of success, but it's going to give the next generation a lot of success. And that same thing is negative, right? Like if we don't take care of our environment and the earth now – It's going to affect us a little bit. It's going to affect future generations' magnitudes. And so the way that we transcend is we realize that everything that we do is actually about being connected to the world around us, to the people around us, and to the world that's going to come after us. That's how we transcend. The longer we stay in our own heads and we focus on our own problems and our own moments and we buy into this separatist mentality that's often pushed by Western culture, transcendence becomes much more difficult. At least that's been my experience thus far. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later on Morning Coffee.
hard till you make it so hard.